Welcome back intuitives and welcome to any new intuitives. I am in a good mood. <laughs> I don't know why, but right when I sat down, I felt great. So I'm wishing you all doing great too. So Natalie here, we are back to do a reading on what do, um, what do the star seeds <laughs> need to be aware of now? Okay. And I have some Starseed Vibration music playing in the background that I do not own the rights to. We're going to be doing the singing bowl just for a moment to hone in and bring in those higher vibrations and frequencies of love and light. And then we'll pull some general messages on the energy. And then we'll begin with the pile preparation picking. Okay. And so um, we are going to be doing three piles and we're going to be using the Starseed Oracle. Okay by Rebecca Campbell and Danielle Noel. So we'll be doing that, okay? Um, so all the timestamps will be linked in the description below. So feel free if you wanna skip anything at all and always have an open mind, open heart to love and light. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. So thank you so much. Okay, so now let's begin with the singing bowl. So this is around the higher heart chakra frequency. So I'll count down from three, doing it three times, then seeing it. So if this is loud, turn it down a little bit, okay? Three, two, one. Okay, now let's begin with our general energetic messages, okay? Okay, so all of the decks I use in this reading um, will be in the description below. These are called the Angel Wisdom Cards. I always use these three decks before every reading. So it's to pick up the energy, um, looking for keywords, anything we may need to know before we begin with each pile reading. Okay, so... Um, we always ask, Divine Source Light Creator and Guides of Love and Light Only, can we get a general energetic message? We got two. Oh, wow. I have to take three. I have to take them. I don't think I've really gotten three before. Um, aspiration, communication, and discernment. So aspiration. It is time to set your, set your sights higher. Oh. If you are settling for the mediocre, aim for the, the superb. Stretch yourself to fulfill all your potential and hold mighty visions. Find the wisdom within you which enables you to aspire to the great and glorious. Then expand your comfort zones so that you can explore your dreams. The angels guide you never to settle for less than your incredible human spirit can achieve or deserves. Ask for help from the angels and they will guide you and inspire you to raise your consciousness and live at a higher level. It's about raising our vibration, raising our frequency. Um, let your spirit soar and aim for the divine affirmation. I aspire to the great and glorious. Love that. Okay. So there's that one. <laughs> okay. We'll set that up there. Next one. Communication. The angels remind you that being spiritual is about being genuine and honest. When you speak from the heart, others feel the resonance of truth and trust you. Talk positively, focus on the good in life, and you'll be happier, feel happier, and healthier. Communication is a two-way process. Listen with interest and respond openly. This will improve all relationships. Communicate constantly with source using prayer, which is asking, and meditation, which is listening. Always keep channels of communication open, of love and light. <clears throat> be a bridge to others' hearts and minds. Ask your angel to step into your aura and communicate in a higher way through you. Affirmation, I communicate clearly and honestly. Okay. Reminds me of Archangel Michael. All right. Set that one back up here. All right. Discernment. Discernment means sensing what feels right or wrong, trusting your judgment and acting on it. Your angel guidance is to look at the people and situations in your life now and respond to your gut feeling. 
Learn to develop your intuition and ask the angels to help you to discern the good from the bad. They will prompt and guide you. You'll feel safer, happier, stronger, and clearer. Wow, angel wisdom reminds you that when you can be trusted to use discernment, you can serve the universe in a great way. Affirmation, I trust my intuition. That's absolutely perfect. Some of you may be uh, dealing with um, some certain individuals in your life that, you know, your gut's telling you maybe they're not the best to be around, um, share energy with, maybe even communicate with. Now you get a higher vision, a higher perspective, and look at it from the outside, detach from a personal level to maybe examine these relationships a little bit, okay? So now from the Awakened Dreamer Oracle, Can we get one from the Awakened Dreamer Oracle? Tilt your gaze skyward. <laughs> Drop all worry about how to create a dreamier life. Tilt your gaze skyward and attune yourself to the wavelength of your oneness with God, God as creator, dream weaver supreme. Become aware of how your spiritual magnetism attracts the most wonderful people opportunities and circumstances oh my gosh that's exactly what we got be mindful of who what where where we go um the energies we surround ourselves with what we listen to what we watch etc okay so last one from the shaman wisdom cards Okay, can we get one last general energetic message? And keep in mind, we're all, all of us are star seeds, originate star seeds. Okay, so we have a number 59. It says East, Feminine, Spring, Child, and Fire. Fire energy, so that's Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. We've been getting a lot of fire energy recently. So um, let's read this out of the guidebook. East, hmm, okay. Here we go, feminine spring child fire. I am the east, I am the dawn. I am the morning, it is within me that the sun is born. I bring illumination and creativity to your path each day. I am springtime, a time of new growth and beginnings. The bright yellow fire of my morning light lifts you beyond the mundane to a spiritual path of strength and intellectual growth. Quietly contemplate the child within and consider new possibilities. There is an inner need to share with others and to find things in common. Ooh, communication with others and with yourself should be as clear as my morning light. You can't just look. You must truly see. I am originality. I am clarity. I am the message. I am the fire within. And I was actually um, thinking of doing an inner child uh, pick file, but I'll probably be doing that next. So super interesting. Okay, let's begin with our preparation pick a pile. All right, I think we're good. <laughs> Okay, welcome to the Preparation Pick a Pile, which we are using the Starseed Oracle by Rebecca Campbell and artwork by Danielle Noel. And we will pick three piles, also double um, pointed quartz uh, crystals. There's different kinds, so we'll be doing that as well. So whatever pile or piles you feel most drawn to, choose those, okay? But use your discernment, all right? So Divine Source Light Creator, Guides of Love and Light Only. Can we get pile number one? Pile number one, this is setting the stage for each pile's reading, okay? Can we get pile number one? Perfect. Can we get pile number two? Oop. And pile number three. Can we get pile number three? Try that again. One. Thank you. Uh-huh. All right, let's get our double-pointed uh, quartz. Can we get pile number one's quartz crystal? Rose quartz for pile number one. Okay, can we get pile number two double pointed quartz? Aventry. And for pile number three, please. Oh, Jasper, red Jasper. Okay. All right, let's see what pile number one is. Jump in. 
Andromedan Energy Adventure Say Yes to Change. I actually pulled this for um, a short general reading earlier that um, is usually like on my TikTok or shorts. Okay, for pile number two, the courageous peony, multifaceted, unique nature, let yourself be seen. Oh, I'm gonna set this here, sorry. Here's pile one, here's pile two with the adventuring. I'll take pictures of these as well and give you another moment to choose your pile or piles. And for pile number three, all paths lead home. Inner authority, intuition, and turning your gaze within with the red jasper. Okay, so those are the piles. Like I said, I'll take a picture of them, give you a moment, and then I'll see you at your pile or piles. Okay, use your discernment. Welcome, pile number one. You chose Jump In, Andromedan Energy, um, Adventure, and Say Yes to Change along with the Rose Quartz. Okay, why is it not, um, it's kind of blurry, isn't it? Well, I apologize. Anyway, so some of you may feel very connected to the Andromedans. If not, that's totally okay, it just is messages. So this jumping in energy is the universe telling you star seeds to jump in, leap forward, say yes to change, take the leap, uh, take the chance. Because um, when we do, when we take chances, um, despite our fears, um, you know, things like that. We, so much can change within our lives. And the eye is seeing things completely differently. So that's super cool. Maybe eyes are very significant. It's like seeing clearly. We did, we did get the clarity in the general energetic messages. So I'm going to read this out of the guidebook for you. Let's find jump, oh, jump in. Okay, pile number one. Andromeda is a spiral galaxy, the closest galaxy to the Milky Way galaxy. Um, it's believed that intermediate and star seeds are a group of beings who love their freedom, very adaptable. They have a strong willingness and ability to change and go with the flow, to find calm in the chaos, to swim with the tides. This card is here to encourage you to do the same. Um, we may all be feeling some type of chaotic type energy lately. Perhaps you have a significant goal or opportunity ahead of you. If so, you're being guided to jump in. Don't wait for permission. Don't stall until you feel ready. Take a deep breath, a good old run up and jump right on in. Life bends for the courageous and courageous is what you're being called to be. You're already facing the right direction. The only thing left to do is leap. You'll figure out what of the details as you go along. Things may not always be smooth sailing. Life on earth rarely ever is. However, it's the rougher seas that teach us how to sail with glory. And once you know that, you can navigate any sea, ocean, or storm. So maybe the waters is very significant to some of you. It can represent feelings and emotions and even intuition. So the Andromedians want you to fall in love with surfing the waves of life, to seek more adventures, to embrace your own adaptability, and find a way to be the calm in the chaos. You didn't come to Earth to be passive. You came to Earth to truly live. Now, take a good run-up and leap starseed soul inquiry. How can you be more adventurous? How are you being called to jump right on in and leap? Okay, so that's super cool. I actually resonate with that pretty well. So now we're going to do some tarot. This is a mystical dream tarot, okay? So divine source light creator and guides of love and light only. So what do pile number one star seeds need to be aware of? What do pile number one star seeds need to be aware of? One and two. So six of wands and the spirit of wands, both fire energy. You may have fire in your chart very strongly somewhere, but the six of wands is about success, triumph, victory, spotlight on the stage, recognition, getting recognition around you, or even recognizing your own success and triumph. It, it's um, like a fulfillment, feeling successful. Okay, beautiful. And then the spirit of wands is the page of wands. Page of wands can be always opportunities. Okay, something new, messages or offers of good news um, to be able to manifest anything you want to reach your achievements, to wave your magic wand, um, to set new intentions, to take new actions towards your goals and achievements. So this is successful. This is triumphant towards you receiving opportunities and offers, even messages, so that you can 
uh, recognize that you have uh, maybe even some good news, um, realizing your opportunities, messages, and new things with offers, uh, understanding, realizing, recognizing, seeing that you can manifest everything. You can be triumphant in this. Um, so what you need to be aware of now is that you are a good manifester. You are good at um, recognizing what I'm getting with these crystals is the energy that this energy is all around you. You can manifest the energy around you to be successful, to be triumphant. That's cool. Okay, so here's the Six of Wands. Okay, and the Spirit of Wands, the Page of Wands. Beautiful. Okay. All right, be aware of that. Now, why do they need to be aware of this? Why do they need to be aware of this? Our pile one star seeds. One more. Why do they need to be aware of this? <laughs> five of cups and the divine tower. Okay, so fives is always about changes and transformations. Cups is feelings and emotions, water energy. The tower is fire energy. Aries Leo Sagittarius. So the five of cups can be about forgiveness, needing to forgive yourself and others. It can be feeling a bit of regret, down, sorrowful, a little bit of a depression, or even feeling like your emotions and feelings are sort of kind of going down the drain. Um, the tower is a number 16 in the tarot, and it's also a seven. The seventh house is about harmony. It's about balance, relationships, partnerships. So the tower is all about huge transformations, huge changes. So it's like, um, why do you need to be aware of this? Because whatever you may have been feeling down about, um, maybe feeling drained about, um, mm, a little bit of regret about, this is completely changing. It's a whole different ball game now. Um, I don't know why I said that, but the tower is like the lightning striking, crumbling of a faulty foundation, foundation to build a better, a better one. Okay, a new foundation, new structure. So this would change. This is going. This is changing. This is completely changing, like massively. It's going to flip everything around so that there's more structure and stability within your life. So there's no more down, low vibrational feelings, regret, um, sorrowful. Um, so yeah, there's two fish on this card that reminds me of Pisces energy and there's a white dove, which is purity. It's like a death rebirth. It is like a spiritual death rebirth changes, transformations. Wow. Okay. Why you need to be aware of this. Okay. Let's get you some Oracle. Now we're going to do the crystal mandala oracle. Okay, what will change now? That pile number one, star seeds now have this information. <laughs> what will change now? That pile number one, star seeds have this information. Now that they have this information. Oh, fire energy. Look at the red root chakra stuff. Root is like the stability, the structure. We're talking about the tower. It's a number 44. Four may be very significant for some of you. The fourth house is like cancer energy. It's home, family, structure, stability, solid foundation. It's also an eight. The four, four is an eight. So eighth house can be death, rebirth, changes, transformation, the rising phoenix. Look what's on the bottom, 54. Goddess Peli and Lava Stone melts into divine desire. Crystal Goddess is 888. So 54 is also a 9. The ninth house is Sagittarius Energy. It's spirituality, faith. So we were talking about you jumping in, right? This is having full faith and going for it. Okay? It's also higher perspectives, higher understanding. We got the eye. Wow. Okay, so Goddess Bastet and Cat's Eye. Sacred Pleasure. Crystal Goddesses 888. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Okay, so you may want to look up angel numbers 44 if you'd like to, or even Crystal Goddesses 
the angel's number 888. Okay, let's find 44. Okay, so what will change now in your life now that you have this information? Sacred pleasure. We bring you the empowerment of sacred pleasure. It is said that the spirit had to be enticed into the body to give up its complete freedom and willingly take on an experience of limitation that could lead to divine growth. It needed to deal to be sweetened. So music was created. Music that could only be felt and expressed through the body. Spirit jumped in. What? You had to jump in. Oh my gosh. In like a flash and life was created. That lightning flash. Hmm. This resonates with me very strongly. Okay, there is more life that can be created in you and in your world, although there are undoubtedly struggles as a natural part of opening up to more life. There is a divine sweetness too. That is the gift of sacred pleasure. This is the pleasure that gives you joy in your aliveness. It is innocent, sensual, and life-affirming. It is time for you to receive more of this. The oracle says it's time to put a little sugar in your bowl. Okay, pleasure and pain are part of the dance of life. You can enjoy pleasure without fearing you'll become addicted to it and no longer be able to bear your pain. In fact, knowing you have access to genuine natural pleasure can be a way to manage pain more effectively. It might seem strange, but there can be an addition to pain just as much as an addition to pleasure, perhaps even more so considering the state of most people's lives these days. Pain has its rightful place in life, but pleasure does too. For more people or many people, there's actually pain that arises when they first learn how to feel genuine pleasure, confusion, shame, guilt, and fear, like the five of cups, okay? Being lazy can enter the mind and cause tension in the body, making it difficult to let go and be in an experience of enjoyment. Pleasure is a form of release. It is about surrender and letting go into the moment. When there is a yearning for pleasure, whether it be the healthy conscious expression of playfulness or the addictive creative for an artificial high, the deeper part of you is letting you know you're, you've wound yourself up too tight. You are trying to control yourself rather than learn to identify and meet your needs in a healthy way. The stronger and more destructive the yearning for pleasure becomes because Wilt's healthy pleasure creates energy, addictive pleasure, depletes your life force and free will. The more you know you're being is reacting against a, a degree of control you are trying to impose on yourself. You may then try to control yourself more in an effort to overcome the yearning for pleasure, but it's just going to inflame the inner battle further. The way most active personalities release the inner tension of this battle is to let then go to the other extreme by acting out of control in a destructive manner. Then there is shame, judgment, and recommendation recrimination and the whole cycle starts again this is exhausting to the body and the mind wow the way to shift out of the inner battle for and against your own pleasure is to begin by realizing the difference between control and loving firm holding control is an attempt at suppression and denial based on fear and lack of acceptance loving firm holding provides a sense of safe and healthy discipline but it does not repress any need or desire. It accepts and acknowledges all needs and then chooses the most loving way to meet them with consciousness and presence. It is free from shame, self-guilt, uh, judgment, and self-hatred. It is based on self-respect and loving the body and mind enough to care for them rather than try to control and dominate them from a fearful place. As you shift from control to loving, firm holding of yourself, exactly, you become able to accept pleasure into your life in many more ways. You feel more open and responsive to life and its sensual beauty and your body and mind can be nourished out of a pain a, of a pain based way of living into a lifestyle that allows for more sacred pleasure. The joy this creates can sustain and strengthen you for the times when there is pain you need to move through in order to grow. Rather than pain being your everyday experience, it, 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 it then becomes a phenomenon that comes into your life and then moves on once the purpose of it, your healing and growth, has been fulfilled. This oracle comes to you with healing guidance. The universal mother knows you have suffered. The five of cups, possibly in your past, okay? And wants to sweeten your deal. If you allow her, she will assist you in purging the self-loathing that has placed you in a painful bind of fear-based control. She will help you love yourself so you can experience the sacred pleasure your life is meant to bring to you. If you have already done this work on yourself and find that bringing sacred pleasure to others through your loving consciousness is part of your life's mission and soul purpose, the oracle brings you confirmation of this. There is value in teaching strength and there is value in providing a safe way for others to experience the sacredness of pleasure as an act of loving life. Holy cow. Wow. Yes. So there may have been some possible 
guilt, fear, pain, trauma. Oh, um, with this five of cups energy in your past, possibly with pleasure of any sort. Okay. So let's get you another Oracle. So that's, what's going to change in your life now. So that's beautiful is healing a transformation, a major transformation with that tower. Okay. All right. So now from the liar and Oracle, you may be connected to the lions, but if not, that's okay. Oh, the lion, you did get the cat's eye. Interesting. Okay. So now, um, what will now be clear seeing for our pile number one star seeds? What will now be clear seeing for our pile number one star seeds? Fusion. Ooh, spiral galaxy. You started out with the spiral galaxy. Okay. Um, spiral, very significant. So number 42, that number may be significant to some of you. The 42 is also a six. You did get the six of wands. Um, the six house is Virgo energy, the body. Okay. We were talking about that a little bit. Um, body, mind. It's also, um, health, uh, wellness, daily routines, boundaries, and organization. Okay. So it says a balanced schedule, heart, living, tantric union. Sacred pleasure, pile one. Oh my gosh, fusion. Okay, so what will now be clear for you? Okay, the fabric of your earth can be broken down into two major components the solid base matter, physical existence, and the subtler spirit energy of the etheric. These two aspects weave together and fuse their properties forward to bring into re reality all that exists. For simplicity's sake, we can refer to these two foundations as the natural plane and the spiritual plane. With the beauty of this existence being that no matter where you go in our universe, spirit is always found in the physical and the physical is always found in spirit. Through this in understanding, the human can begin to incorporate these properties into the actions of all that they do to align with harmonic balance. Say, for example, that a certain individual has an ambition to run a marathon and is seeking to tap into discipline and willpower to accomplish this goal. One aspect of the preparation can be an earth-based planning regime consisting of schedule, where to run, where to eat, where to sign up for the marathon, etc. But another component is combining the spirit-based frequency, where one can incorporate certain practices such as meditation to get higher insight <laughs> into how to train properly or to charge their body with healing frequency while they are running. We find that when the human combines these two foundations of the spirit and physical in all they, that they do, they find an equilibrium that leads to great success in all they do so what is clear seeing now you're going to be seeing clearly that you're combining infusing and balancing the spirit and the the spiritual and the physical for your great success we got the six of wands that success and triumphant energy okay amazing so another example on the opposite end is say an individual wants to access certain spiritual abilities from past future lifetimes in addition to performing spirit-based practices such as tapping into the akashic records past life meditation energy healing etc they can also engage in action in the physical by exploring specific countries or ancient cultures that they resonate with traveling there trying the cuisine and experiencing this exploration from a grounded level this path of fusion is necessary for your world is made of spirit and earth and to engage in fusion bridges hemispheres within your divine temple and creates harmonic balance in your life. Your Lyran family presents this card when your current situation is seeking a balanced fusion of spirit and physicality. Go into your inner awareness and begin to assess what is needing balance at this moment in your life. This assessment can be applied to any situations, goals, relationships, or just the current moment to find what is needed for harmonic balance in your life. Wow. Okay, additional meanings. Stay. Presence, well-being, romances improve, healing health, loyalty, beauty uncovered, sacred partnership, and gift of life. Optimal exercise. Make a dedication to say thank you internally to all the sacred gifts around you right now. Thank the universe for health or the ability to move your hands or to see blue skies, etc. What? Dig deep and find the divine beauty in all you experience for the gift is right here, right now. Oh my gosh, that's the clear scene for you. That's amazing. Okay, so we're going to move those. 
All right, and we're gonna get you your last message and we're going right back to the Starseed Oracle, okay? Okay, awesome. Okay, so what else can our pile number one Starseeds take with them? What else can our pile number one Starseeds take with them? Last message, please. Ooh, Star Family. We were, we were just talking about the Lyran star family, okay? It says you're part of a team of souls and call in support. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, star family. Let's see. This way. There's a lot of stars. Okay, here we go. At some stage, we were each part of a soul cluster, a gathering of souls who broke away from one another to experience themselves individually. Those who are part of your soul cluster are part of your star family. Your star family are those souls who are cut from a similar cosmic cloth. You haven't just experienced lifetimes together. Your souls were once actually one. It's very common for star family members to incarnate at similar times, to work with anchoring a similar frequency of light, and to cross paths with each other. You know that someone is part of your star family when you feel like you know and remember them from the moment you meet. They feel instantly familiar and comfortable. Time both passes quickly and stretches when you're with them. You feel more yourself with them than with anyone else. It can sometimes feel like looking in the mirror because in a way you are. Often you'll go out of your way to help those in your star family, instinctively knowing it's part of your path. When a star family member dies, you feel it very deeply, regardless of how long you knew them. A certain soul mourning or soul breaking occurs. Think about the people in your life. Who do you feel is part of your star family? If this card comes up in a spread, it's likely that you've met someone who is part of your star family or you're about to star seed soul inquiry. Who do you think is from the same star family as you? How can you call upon them for support? Okay, very interesting. Actually, I'm going to do one last message, okay? Um, we're gonna do the Rebecca Campbell, so. Or sorry, not that. It is not Rebecca Campbell, I'm sorry. It's Melanie Beckler. Okay, what is it from the Melanie Beckler Oracle that they need to know? Call number one star seeds. What is it? Let's find out. What is it from the Melanie Beckler Oracle that they need to find out? That's trying to come through. One piece. Okay. <laughs> the blue, the stars. You have support. It's more confirmation. It almost is like, almost like a spiral galaxy. But it says, believe in your dreams. Aim high. <laughs> Jump in, okay? And honor your brilliance, okay? Know your beauty. Believe in your beauty. Know you are beauty. And remember, you have help. It's more confirmation. Amazing. Look how cool that is. Okay, pile number one. These are your messages. Take what resonates. Leave whatever may not resonate. Use your discernment. And if any of you are interested in a free personal reading, my email is in the description below. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And as always, unconditional love and light. So be it. And I'll see you in the next reading or video. All right. Bye, pile number one. Welcome, pile number two. You chose the courageous peony with the adventuring. Yes, adventuring reminds me of the heart chakra. This says multifaceted, unique nature, and let yourself be seen. Okay, star seed, pile number two. Let yourself be seen. No more hiding, no more pulling back, no more speaking or holding yourself back from speaking up and shining your light in the corner of your world. Okay, so step out of the shell, step out of the bushes and bloom, okay? Show your bloom, show your your light, spread your light, um, be your authentic self, share your truth, speak your authentic self, speak your mind, speak your heart, okay? So let's find this in the guidebook for you, okay? Let's see, oh, right there, okay? So flowers don't open and close according to who walks by. They embrace 
all of what they are and show it to the world around them. The peony doesn't try to compete with the cherry blossom and the cherry blossom doesn't try to compete with the tulip. They own what they are and trust the timing of their true nature. You're being called to do the same. It's time to open yourself to being seen. Time to share your incredible, multifaceted, true nature with the world around you. To uncover and reveal your soul's greatest gifts without wavering. To own your uniqueness without apology. There's a flower on this planet that holds the same qualities that your soul is readying itself to express. Let it inform you. You may have been taught that it's safer to keep your light hidden and your voice small. To hide behind the bushes instead of growing tall. Ooh, some of you may have wrote poetry or something okay the courageous peony is here to remind you that it's safe to embody all of who you truly are it's safe to share your voice and let yourself be seen at first it may feel uncomfortable and you may be afraid of what others think but with each passing day it does become easier little by little you realize that it draws in those who are meant for you and experiences you've been longing for arrive at your feet starseed soul inquiry how are you being called to allow yourself to be more visible and seen in the world? Some of you may be connected to pile number one, <clears throat> but it doesn't have to be. Oh, we're going to be doing some tarot. So we're doing the shadow scapes tarot. All right. Okay. Pile number two, divine source light creator, guides of love and light only. <sighs> what do um, pile number two star seats need to be aware of? What do pile number two star seeds need to be aware of? One, can I get one more? Okay, that's it. All right, what do you need to be aware of? Queen of Cups, oh my gosh. And the Ten of Wands, okay. So the Queen of Cups is Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio energy, water. The Ten of Wands is fire energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. These are two opposite energies, right? So. The Queen of Cups is an empath, okay? Empaths kind of do this. They go through phases, uh, especially when they're younger, usually, of, like, hiding, you know, not really speaking up, being a little shy, things like that. So the Queen of Cups is an empath. She's sympathetic, okay? She can channel... Um, into her intuition very well she's balanced with her feelings and emotions and she is the seer she sees things differently she sees truth she sees what's going on around her she's an observer and the ten of wands is usually um something about burdens um what's burdened you in the past possibly with your empath type abilities for some of you um or what you've witnessed and seen, or maybe even um, when you're there for others' feelings and emotions, they may somewhat take advantage of you, okay? That's kind of empath stuff, okay? So the Ten of Wands, though, is a completion of this, okay? So what's happening is what you need to be aware of is that things are balancing out with your intuition, your feelings and emotions, um, your clarity and how you see things, and even there for others' feelings and emotions. And it's, there's an ending to what those things, those burdens have done to you. There's an ending of that because the 10 is a completion. It's a fulfillment. It is about cycles ending for new beginnings, new, better things. Okay. And so it does remind me of that courageous peony, how dimming your light, etc. And that dimming our light, not living our authentic self or expressing our truth. It does burden us. It does, okay? So there's a completion of that. So there's going to be a new journey, a new beginning that's more balanced, that you can be more of yourself. Oh my gosh, so beautiful. Okay, here's the Queen of Cups. So be aware of this. Ten of Wands. Carrying everything on her back. No more. She's going to be free and let that stuff just like float away right okay more tarot so why do they need to be aware of this why do pile number two star seeds need to be aware of this one can i get one more okay perfect why three of cups and ace of pentacles exactly are you kidding me Ugh, the three of cups Okay, is about a celebration. It's about 
working together. It could be three energies, mingling, partying, hanging out, uh, just get togethers, but it's always a celebration, a good flow energy. Three is always about working together. It's about teamwork and the Ace of Pentacles, it's a new beginning. It's being able to plant new seeds, plant new intentions, plant new things, new life, new journey, new anything to be able to nurture yourself and your journey along the way so you can reach your goals and achievements and accomplishments. And it can be within your entire world, especially with pentacles. It's earthy. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. That's why. It's going to be like a celebration. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. And the third house in astrology is ruled by Gemini. It represents communication, um, transportation journeys, and technology. Ace of Pentacles. Always something new. It's always a yes. It's always a new beginning. Look at the chameleon. That's interesting. Empaths can be like chameleons, whether good or bad. It don't matter. Um, but yes, so let's get you some oracle now. We're going to be doing Beyond Lemuria, which is very water energy. It reminds me of that Queen of Cups. Some of you may be very connected to Lemurians or Lemuria in general, but use your discernment. Okay, so question is, now what will change for pile number two, star seeds, their life, now that they have this information? What will change now that pile number two, star seeds have this information? Ooh. Oh my gosh, Realm Bridger? Are you kidding me? We were talking about your empath type abilities. Realm Bridger, from the, from the intuitive inner spirit world to the outer physical world. Wow, and it's a number 41. That number may be significant to some of you. 41 could also be a five, okay? Five is all about the changes and transformations and it can be a bit of challenges. So, but we know anything that changes within our lives, um, transforms within our lives, sometimes brings certain challenges, right? And right off the bat, it says visionaries. That Queen of Cups is a seer. You are a seer, visionary. It says architects of the future. Ace of Pentacles, yes. Okay, information from other realms. Bridging the seen with the unseen, inspiration, seeding a new earth. Oh, the seed and earth, yes, you are helping seed the new earth. Traversing different states of consciousness, birthing ideas from subtle reality, and journeying. Have you ever felt that there is more than meets the eye in the perception we call reality? That there is more going on behind the scenes? Do you ever glimpse beyond your physical senses and wonder if that they perceive what they perceive is just the tip of the iceberg. Do you ever get visions or insights just as you are falling off to sleep? Do you dream in colors that are more vibrant than you have experienced in waking life? As you raise your vibration and explore different states of consciousness, you may experience phenomena you might have believed only happens in fantasy stories. Through meditation and journeying, we invite a greater awareness of the subtle realities. These realms can be amazing places to bring through pioneering ideas, creativity, and to explore the edges of the universe. This card is about bridging the seen and the unseen. Intuitive painting is my method of connection. That's Izzy Ivy, okay? You, oh wait, let's see. Oh, but the ability to crystallize the normal and tangible can manifest in other ways. Hmm, anchoring the collective dreaming for a new future is not as out of reach as we may think. Just as water changes from solid gas to liquid, we can catch the intangible in other forms. Metaphors, codes, or even maths can form the path of the visionary. Once these visions are in the minds and hearts of many, it can merge into matter. These blueprints then go to the architects and the ideas become physicalized. It is time to dream outside the box. It is time for the inventors and artists, the poets. Oh, well, I was mentioning poem possibly. And the visionary leaders to step forward. Yes, like the courageous peony. Um, and collectively dream in the new future. You are the pioneer of your life. The way forward may be in your dreams or visions. You might find it useful to do automatic writing or intuitive drawing to capture some of the more lucid information. Be creative and don't take on the opinions of others. 
it's time to think and do things a whole other way. After all, as the saying goes, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Okay, wow, that is very, very, very interesting. Yes, confirmation for sure. So that's what's gonna change within your life now. You're gonna be just stepping forward and helping birth in this new earth, this new place, this new paradigm of love and light, right? Of the heart, okay? So now we've got the wild mystic oracle. All right, what will now be clear seeing for pile number two star seeds? What will now be clear seeing for pile number two star seeds? Okay. Huh. It says consume. It's a vulture. Vulture. Huh. Wow. Yeah, you may be connected to pile number one. Okay. So vulture, it's a bird, it gets higher perspectives, it sees things from a whole different perspective. The skulls can be like a, the Scorpio energy of the death, rebirth, changes, transformation, incarnation. Um, let's read this though. Um, I'm, they're not in order, so, oh, here we go. Okay, consume. So what is gonna be clear seeing for you now? Um, I feel like you are not gonna be consumed anymore. You're gonna know what consumes your energy <laughs> wow so this card represents the union of life and death consuming that which has died in order to live many of the mythologies surrounding the vulture are in opposition to one another while the ancient egyptians associated the bird with life-giving fertility protection and feminine deities the ancient Greeks and Romans associated the bird with war, destruction, ill omen, and masculine deities. The vulture card may be asking you to confront your own duality or how the opposites within yourself complement you as a whole. As a carrion bird, the vulture is fundamentally linked to death, but it is through their scavenging that they feed themselves and their young. Just as the death of one creature nourishes the life of another, remember that we are three-dimensional. You got that three cups? Imperfect beings made up of negative and positive traits. Our shadow may nourish our light as we learn and accept our own imperfections. The vulture was often used as an agent of vengeance in Greek myths, such as the vulture, though some translations also state to Eagle, who tortured Prometheus at Zeus's behest. behest. Vengeance as an emotion can consume and must be kept in check. This card asks you to take that vengeance and overwhelming negative emotion do not consume you and to find the balance between light and dark. Wow, the element is air, so Aquarius, Gemini, Libra energy. The floor is Galango, Root, Black-Eyed Susan, and Chestnut. The stones are Rhodonite, Red Jasper, Fire Opal, and Black Obsidian. Actually, Pile 3 got the Red Jasper too, so you may be connected to that as well. So it says, Urging Justice Upon One who has harmed you, reversing hexes, shadow work, dealing with past life trauma, and confronting one's own faults. Wow, possibly kind of like letting others somewhat just step all over you at times, you know? Okay, so no more burdens. Consumed causes the burdens in you, okay? So now we're going back to the Starseed Oracle, okay? All right. Okay, so what else does pile number two star seeds need to know, need to take with them? What else do they need to know all, about all of this that they can take with them? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Earth school, life lessons, soul growth, study, higher learning, <laughs> of course. Yep, we all came here for a reason. We're all star seeds. Um, this is earth school, okay? It's life lessons. It's about our soul growth. And what we need to learn in this life and gaining higher learning higher perspectives higher understanding so let's find earth school okay all right planet earth is a great initiation for the soul and life lessons are the curriculum for which we enroll these aren't one-time lessons but themes we choose to circle around deepening our experience of them as we make our way through the spiral of life Life lessons aren't only about getting it right. They're also about getting it wrong. Like the light and shadow, light and dark, yin yang. 
Remembering that Earth is a planet of polarity helps with this understanding. Each year, the study deepens more and more. If you pull this card while you're going through a difficult time, you're being prompted to remember that your soul came here to grow and learn. Oh my gosh, she got the courageous peony. Try not to look at difficult times as getting it wrong. Instead, see them as opportunities for soul growth. If you can find a way to grow and soften your heart through the highs and lows, your soul is most definitely growing, which is the whole point. Pulling this card can also mean that you're being called to embark on a new area of study or growth. This could be through structured learning, such as university, school, or a training course. If you're having difficulties in a relationship, you're being reminded that these are opportunities for soul growth. After all, relationships are known as the number one way that we grow as souls while we're here on earth. Starseed Soul Inquiry, how are you being called to grow and learn? Okay, nice. Yes, yes, yes. All right, pal two. Now we're going to get your last message from the Melanie Beckler Oracle. Okay. All right. What do our pal two starseeds need to know from the Melanie Beckler Oracle? Try that again, please. Mm -mm. Try that again. One, please. Okay. What is this? Uh huh. Surrender. <laughs> oh my gosh. Surrender to your soul path, your soul journey. Um, surrender to the divine source, like Creator. Okay. It says, trust the divine. Release the outcome and say yes to life. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. Okay. There we go. All right, pile number two. These are your messages. Take what resonates, though. Leave whatever may not resonate. Use your discernment. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And if any of you are interested in a free personal reading, my email is in the description below. And as always, unconditional love and light so be it and i'll see you in the next reading or video bye pile two okay welcome pile three you chose all paths lead home with the red jasper okay so it does say um inner authority intuition and turn your gaze within so this red jasper reminds me of the root chakra so it's stability it's structure, it's good foundation. So all paths lead home. That's like going inward. It's doing introspection. Whatever we're trying to find is always within. We do have an inner authority. We can lead our own, uh, take our own spot as a leader in our own paths, right? So that's super cool. Let's read this out of the guidebook for you. And I just lit, uh, actually a root chakra incense. <laughs> right before your pile. So let's find this in the guidebook. And, oh, is that it? Yep. Okay. So it's normal to look to the external world for answers and guidance. What's revolutionary is turning your gaze inward. You're being called to source your guidance from within, to study the terrain of your inner landscape, to develop a reliable relationship with your soul. The more time you spend connecting with your soul, the deeper connection it will become. The challenge for empaths is staying connected without cutting off from the world. The best way to do this is to develop a daily practice that helps you to keep checking in, to draw on the wisdom within, and let that be the authority in your life. Oh my gosh, I have a cotton. <laughs> Ooh, ticklish. Okay, so if this card appears, you may be called to develop or switch up your spiritual practice, to get in the habit of turning your gaze within, getting centered for the day before consuming anything from the outside world. You may feel a connection with pile number two, just saying, <laughs> okay? To start from feeling of uh, at-homeness and throughout each day to find simple ways to keep coming home. This doesn't mean switching off from the realities of today's world. We need as many conscious people as possible living with their eyes open wide open rather it's a call to start your day from a place of connectedness grace and devotion so when you go out into the world and when you let the world in you do it from an unshakable state of being a state where you draw your strength authority and guidance from a place deep deep within okay um this does remind me of aries type energy it's a fire sign 
And in the tarot, it's the emperor card. It's like divine masculine. It is stability. It's structure. It's being the king of all kings, being your own boss, being your own leader, and being balanced. So super interesting that very good stability, very good structure. Um, it's always within ourselves, right? And the star seed soul inquiry says, how are you being called to turn your gaze within? And this also reminds me of detaching from outside influences, the outside world, also connecting with it from a balanced state, a stable state of being, right? But um, not taking everything personally, um, uh, uh, being balanced in the way you deal with your outside world and your inner world. So let's do some tarot. We've got tarot of a moon garden, okay? So, Divine Source Light, Creator, and Guides of Love and Only. What do pile number three star seeds need to be aware of? What do pile number three star seeds need to be aware of? One. Can I get one more? Okay. <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. All right. That's pretty cool. So you got the fool, which is actually the very, oh my gosh, look what's on the bottom, the world. So the fool is where the major arcana start and the world is where it ends. Wow. Okay. This is super cool. So the fool is uh, Aquarius energy or Gemini Libra and the king of swords is the same. Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, energy, air stuff, okay? So the air can be anything with the thoughts, the mentality, beliefs, words, communication. Um, so the fool is always about having full faith and like leaping forward, jumping into the unknown, having full faith and going for your dreams and achievements, um, being spontaneous, being adventurous as well. Um, and the king of swords is balanced with his mentality, balanced with his mind, his thoughts, his communication and words. He stands for truth and justice and he's an authority type of figure of some sort. And it's usually with like the mind, mental things, okay? And he gets higher perspectives. So what you need to be aware of now is having faith in a balanced mental way, um, hmm, the fool is a, also a leap of faith, a leap of faith into balance, into a higher perspective of things. Okay, that's really interesting. And in this tarot, this is a court jester that may be significant to some of you. And a fool can be the joker, right? And it's about laughing and having fun and um, positivity, joy, um, creativity, inspiration, okay? So there may be a change in the way you think, in the way you, yeah, the way you think, the way your mind is. And like when we process information, you know, sometimes it comes out in a different way than what you want it to. I don't know. I feel like this, that's changing. I, that's what I feel. That's changing. So you're going to be able to speak, think, believe, communicate in a more balanced state. And it's from a higher perspective. That may be from your introspection work going within. Wow. Okay. Now let's ask, whew, let's see. Why do they need to be aware of this? Why do they need to be aware of this? Two cards, please. One and one more. Why do they need to be aware of this? Uh-huh. Yep. Uh-huh. Okay. Wow. Seven of wands and the 10 of cups. The seven of wands is divine protection. It's about standing up for your beliefs, standing up what you believe in. It's also can be defensive type energy, but it's always standing up for yourself, for your authentic self, taking action to stand up and protect everything you've built. Also, it can be a protective type of bubble. So now the 10 of cups is um, your most enjoy joyful 
a happy, abundant life, good stability, good structure, your most comfortable life, feeling emotionally balanced. So why you need to know this is that you, you need to know you have divine protection. There's a, there's something within you that's going to be balancing out the way you speak your truth, fight for what's right, maybe even stand up to those around you. And that's what's going to bring in this stability, this structure, this comfort, this calmness, this fulfillment. Hmm, there's a tons of butterflies. Butterflies are all about changes and transformations. With the seven, the seventh house is Libra energy. But it's about partnerships, relationships, unions, balance, which reminds me of this king of swords. He's all about truth, justice, balance, clarity. Mm. The ten of cups, ten is always a fulfillment, always a completion, a success, prosperity, cycles ending for new beginnings. Okay. Okay, come here. <laughs> Let's get you some oracle, okay? Pile three. Now... We've got the Earth Warriors Oracle. Okay, so what will change now um, for pile number three star seeds now that they have this information? What will change now for pile number three's life? Their pile number three star seeds life now that they have this information? 43. So there's another seven. Okay, um, you may want to look up angel number 77. Remember that seventh house is about balance and harmony, unity, justice, uh, relationships, partnerships. It says Virococha, Vira, Vira Cocha. I think it's Vira Cocha. Honor the light. Ooh, let's read this. Honor the light. Honor your light. Okay. Oh, wow. Uh, you are a light bearer. Your sole purpose is to redress. The presence of darkness on this planet through shining the light. You are meant to do this in the ways that feel most uplifting to you. Yes, what brings brightness to your spirit? Do those things. How can you create a loving legacy to remind others of the light? Exploring and expressing the light in ways that remind others to seek light is also a way to fulfill your divine destiny. Your light is powerful. Use it. Wow. People around you, perhaps even you, can sometimes get caught up in the troubles of the world and, wow, and forget to focus on the light and their own creative power. Gently but persistently remind yourself and others to ask for divine help. This can be done according to each individual's belief system. We were talking about the mind. Prayers will be answered. Focus on the light at specific moments during each day. Hmm. Place sacred objects in your line of vision so you see them and remember the light often. You are a light worker, a light bearer, one who is divinely designed to receive and transmit light for the benefit of humankind and Mother Earth. You have more influence in situations to bring about divine conclusions that you may realize than you may realize. Sorry. Don't be afraid to use your light in all ways possible. <sighs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. Now, from the Gateway of Light Activation Oracle. So that's what's going to change within your life now that you have this information. You're going to be able to spread your light, share your light, and it's going to help others do the same. Okay? So what will now be clear seeing for pile number three starseeds? What will now be clear seeing for pile three starseeds? Stellar Gateway Activation. Infinite Potential. <laughs> Manifestation Vortex. Wow. So what's going to be clear to you now that you have this information? You are going to be able to realize your potential and how you can manifest, manifest your fulfillment, completed life, um, helping those around you, helping the world. Okay. Stellar gateway. Let's find that. Okay. The stellar gateway is the highest of our chakras and is found about 12 to 24 feet or three to six meters above our head. It is the energetic gateway that connects us with the divine matrix. It governs our connection to the spiritual laws of creation in the quantum field. 
this king of swords, he's always about higher perspectives. He can be an authority type of figure. He's about the balance and harmony and justice and truth. Wow, beautiful. Okay, and holds our life's potential as it holds all the intentions that we've set during it that support the ever unfolding path of our earthly experience. Energetically, this portal is beyond time and space. And when we connect with it, we become into alignment with all the aspects of our soul's journey, including when we were part of the cosmos. This transports us to a stargate that has a giant pyramid within it. Above the stargate, there are three dimensional images of Thoth, the former priest king of Atlantis, who is one of the ancient masters holding the secrets of the universe. This image is a reminder of our potential and of our ancient starry connections. The pyramid is a symbol of rising power and of how our soul has existed through lifetimes. The rising power reminds me of this seven of staffs, the seven of wands, because this is like almost like reclaiming your power, standing up in your own light, standing up for your truth, right? Okay. Um, this card is therefore, oh wait, the stargate is a projection of our own stellar gateway. This card is therefore a reminder that all things are possible and that with the right alignment, we can draw the powers of heaven down to earth in order to create heaven upon earth. How to connect? Breathe deeply. Imagine that your breath is taking you up and out to connect with the infinite potential held within the stars. That reminds me of the fool. I connect with heaven and earth to create heaven on earth. You are a master of manifestation. Every one of your thoughts, actions, non-actions, and choices is affecting the unfolding of your path. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yes, it does. All paths lead home. Okay. Realize that you have great potential and power within you. And through your focused awareness, you can draw on heavenly support to create the life of your wildest dreams. That Ten of Cups. Know that all the energies you connect with are carried up to the, your stellar gateway. And if they are aligned with the intentions of your soul had before this incarnation, opportunities will come your way. It is important to consider connecting with your cosmic origins at this time and also tracking down the intentions of your soul. For if you can bring your wishes in this life together with your pre-life intentions, you can live a life that is aligned with the highest heavens. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's so beautiful. Okay. So we will switch this up a little bit. All right. So now we're going to do another one from the Starseed Oracle. Okay. So what else does Pile 3, our Pile 3 Starseeds, need to know? What else do they need to know? Our Pile 3 Starseeds. What else do they need to know? One card, please. What else do our Pile 3 Starseeds need to know about all of these messages? The connection. Mm. Any more confirmation? Ooh. Oh, Whale and Orca Elders. Oh, we did get that Ten of Cups. That's water energy, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Maybe that's in your chart very strongly. Okay, so it says share your song, <laughs> frequency of sound, and diving deep. Remember, we're talking about introspection, going within, doing some inner work, okay? Whale and Orca Elders, okay? The Whale and Orca Elders are benevolent cosmic beings here to anchor a frequency of love onto the planet, to harmonize it with our song. As they weave around the oceans, they do so much more than any of us know. Their physical presence affects Earth's magnetic field, and their harmonics call us to wake up and remember our own soul song. Looking into the eye of a whale is something you'll never forget. Whales see into your very being, and in an instant, you're changed forever. They see beyond the physical, the woundings, the identity, the personality, the story. They see right into your soul. If you pull this card, you're being called to surrender to your deepest truth and share it with potency. Okay, didn't Pile 2 get surrender? They did. I know they did. I know they did. 
Where is it? Yep, pile two got surrender. So you may want to look and watch pile two if you feel called to, okay? All right. Um, and that fool is like surrender energy. It's having full faith. All right. Um, to surrender to your deepest truth. King of Swords. Truth. And share it with potency. To bow to who you truly are. Oh my gosh, absolutely. To stretch your heart wide enough to hold it all. To leave your fears, doubts, and baggage at the door. To question any part of you that doesn't feel good enough. To, or the whale and orca elders want you to give your others the privilege of seeing who you truly are. Absolutely. And for you to see the same in other beings. To drop your hang-ups and personality flaws and get busy revealing the unique note your soul came here to sing. Oh my gosh. Allow the song that echoes in the four chambers of your heart to emanate in all four directions. Peel back the layers of suffering and pain and reveal to others your soul's true song and endeavor to see the soul of all those you meet. Oh my gosh. Starseed Soul Inquiry. How are you being called to share your soul's unique song? That seven of wands. It's so powerful in your reading. Share your inner light. Stand up for who you are. Okay. All right. Well, let's get your last message, and we're going to use the Melanie Beckler Oracle, okay? All right, which is it? What is it going to be? Divine Source Light Creator and Guides of Love and Light Only from the Melanie Beckler Oracle for our pile three star seeds. What is it? What do they need to know from the Melanie Beckler Oracle? Okay, no, that's not it, is it? It is! Oh, yes, Wild Child. Okay, and there's a hummingbird on here. Maybe hummingbirds are very significant to you. There's also a cat. It looks like a tabby. So that full energy can be young type energy. Creative, joyful, right? Positivity. It says embrace playfulness and innocence. Time for inner child healing. I want to show you something. I just received this oracle deck today. Look at this. And I haven't even opened it up yet. What's the hummingbird connection for you three? Okay, so time for inner child healing. That is going to be a big part of oops, your all past lead home, introspection, inner work. Okay, amazing. So do what makes you happy. And that's what is going to just light you up. And everybody else is going to see it. And they're going to want to do the same, right? That's what helps others. <sighs> okay, all right, pile three. These are your messages. But Take what resonates and leave whatever may not resonate. Use your discernment. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And if any of you are interested in a free personal reading, my email's in the description below, okay? And as always, unconditional love and light, so be it. And I'll see you guys in the next reading or video. All right, Pal3, thank you so much. Bye-bye.